Hi, welcome to my channel. This is Abhilash Marichi and I talk about data, product and life. Let's say you want to come up with a product idea, hoping that you would want to build a successful startup one day. If you're someone who is scrambling to get ideas or you want to know the right way of coming up with the ideas, then this video is for you. First thing you should know is this. Don't look for great ideas. Instead, look for close problems. The most common mistake is trying to come up with great ideas and it will make you very difficult to move ahead when the situation gets tougher. So don't start with great idea in mind because you might think your idea is great but you don't know. So don't start with that. So instead, the best way to start is to look out for the problems. Look for the problems which you face every day in your life. Have an ear for the complaints what people do around you. Look for what people complain and then see if you're interested in solving them. Michael Sibel, co-founder of Twitch, says that most people have ideas book. Instead, you must keep a problems book and note down all the problems that you see around you. I would recommend spend some time closely looking for problems around you. Make note of all the problems you see. Do this exercise for some time. See if you have a solution in mind for them. See if you are interested in solving them. So just make, make that entire list. If you go around for a few days with this intention in mind, I'm sure you will find some. It would be a great choice if you find a problem which you are facing so that when you think of a solution, you will know that whether your solution is going to help you or not. So let's say you went around for a couple of weeks and listed down some problems now and have some solutions for some problems and some problems might just be there. You don't know the solution yet. The next best thing is to look out for those problems which you are interested in solving. You must think to yourself that what makes you different in solving this problem, what you should do is to go and do some research on how other people have tried to solve this problem and how your perspective is unique compared to other people's solution. And also think to yourself that how are you uniquely capable of solving this problem? Do you have a different angle to it? Do you have a different skill set which can solve this? Or do you have a different perspective of the whole problem? Try to make a list of all these advantages which you have. Do not ever skip this step. Go do your research. Try to learn as much as possible about the problem. If you do this initially, it will save you a lot of time in the future. It will save you from taking wrong decisions and going into the wrong direction. Most people, including me, hesitate to go and learn about other people's ideas. Because in my case, I think that if I know others' ideas, the originality of my idea goes away. So that's the reason I, I kind of hesitate to look into other ideas. But that is something which we have to overcome, look into other ideas and learn from them. We must remember that there is no need to reinvent the wheel. You should always think of utilizing the wheel which is already available in various different ways efficiently. So don't try to start from scratch. Even Albert Einstein did not start from scratch when he came up with the theory of relativity. Albert Einstein published his theory of relativity building on many theoretical results and empirical findings obtained by Albert Michelson, Henrik Lorenz, Henry Poincare and others. So after doing these two steps, so now you must be with a problem and achievable solution, your unique approach to solving it. So once you have all these things, the next best thing what you should do is to build an MVP. I have another video which talks about why you need to build an MVP that will show in the card here and I'll also put a link in the description below. Go through that video as well that will give you even more information about why you need to build an MVP. If you have found value up until this point in this video, go smash the like button and click on the subscribe button so that you'll be notified when I upload my next video. Thanks for doing it. Going on to the next step. Do not fall in love with the product. Instead, fall in love with the problem and the customers. So if you fall in love with the product, that's a huge mistake. You might not come up with the right approach to solving a problem with your very first attempt. You might have to go through multiple iterations to actually come up with a workable solution. And then you might have to go through even more iterations to make it appealing to your customers and make it easy for them to use. Always think that your solution is going to change, but your goal of solving the problem will remain. Your goal of serving your customers will remain. So these two are your constant points, not your product. You must not attach yourself to the product. You should be very flexible in changing the product. Always try to build the features, change the features, or remove the features to achieve your goals. One of the best ways of avoiding to falling in love with your product is to build your product very quickly. Build your initial MVP as early as possible. So it can be done in a week or two. So don't spend too much time on building your MVP. And once you build your MVP, the next step what you have to do is to hand pick your initial set of customers. You should always pick the customers who really have a problem and who are willing to try your solution. The goal of MVP is not to get thousands of customers. The goal of MVP is always to 
validate or invalidate the hypothesis and check if your solution actually solves the problem or not. Make as many iterations as possible until you solve the problem or at least one core aspect of the problem. Again, once you solve the problem and you know you're solving the problem, don't go to get thousands of customers. Instead, enhance your product in such a way that your first few hand-picked customers loves your product very much. You should build your product so well that your initial set of customers do not hesitate to talk about your product with other people who have similar problems. That is where you start building a great brand and a loyal customer base. It is very important that you have that initial customer base who really, really love your product. And then unknowingly, they'll be the ambassadors of your product. I know all this process will take a long time. Yes, there are exceptions. There are some products soon after they launch, they reach millions of users. They get a huge customer's base and then they go on to be successful. But many other products are not like that. My uncle, who my I consider to be very successful once said this to me which changed the perspective of how I look at my product he said your product is like a baby and you have to take care of your baby for first few years you have to ensure that the baby gets all the nutrients you have to ensure that the baby is not hurt you have to ensure that your baby grows up well then once it is grown up then you can expect that to go out and do some work for you if you are patient and you keep your enthusiasm up and reach this point you would probably go on and build a successful startup but keep in mind if you have reached this point, this is just the beginning. I hope this video has helped you to start your ideation process and to come up with a product idea and building a product. Let me know in the comments below what are your thoughts after watching this video and what are you planning to build. I would like to hear your ideas. I would wish you all the best in coming up with your product ideas and building the product and becoming successful. Thank you for watching the video. Take care, stay safe and bye-bye.